Welcome to the Cross Border Injury is the show where we bring you up close and personal with some of Canada's most exciting and vibrant communities. This unique episode of the Cross Border Interviews was recorded live at the SUMA conference in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan earlier in April. Our show is dedicated to sitting down with local elected leaders from across Canada and learning about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities a better place for everyone who lives there. Today's guest is Lloyd Minster Councillor Jason Whiting. Welcome. Hey, Long time no see. It's been a while. Yeah, glad to see you again. Um, so I'm going to start with a question I've started with all my interviews, and yep. you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Uh, you know what? I probably came from my dad and the history in the community of Lloydminster. I've been, uh, my dad, you know, born and raised in Lloydminster, myself born and raised in Lloydminster, uh, watching him grow up, uh, be involved in a variety of different organizations over time. Uh, and then myself too, you know, I'm following suit and, uh, and a few, you know, getting involved in a few different organizations and, and, and just, you know, wanting to provide that next level of, uh, uh, commentary next level of uh direction for our community from from a yeah not so much anymore but maybe i can still say a little bit younger voice on council not uh, not the youngest not the oldest but somewhere in there and and uh that's yeah so i i feel like that's that's kind of how i got there and and part of the reason why i'm still there one of the re- one of the cruxes of the show is talking about why municipal yeah. You could have chosen provincial, you could have chosen school right. board, you could have chosen federal, yep. you could have just chosen volunteerism. But you decided that the best way to give back to your community is the the political realm. Why? Uh, yeah, so, you know, in the municipal world, that municipal politics, it's the it's the closest to the taxpayer, the person that uh, you're making the decisions for. You know, as you go up the ranks between provincial to federal, you just get a little bit more and more disconnected, a little bit more higher level uh, between yourself and the, uh, the the voice you're representing. Uh, and, you know, I... I I just see you can do the most bang for your buck at the at the local level and uh, and and I think that's you know that's the reason why I'm I'm interested in this level of uh, politics and and I I it's politics but I, at the same time man I, it's it's sometimes I just don't consider it politics you know I I consider it the same as me being on a a board of governance for an organization you know whatever it is you're you know we're not. When I think of politics, I think of partisan. I think of certain... Uh, because everyone around your council chambers is looking out for the best of the city. They don't on, care if you're liberal it, yeah, or... Yeah, exactly. On, on every single topic, you know, you're, you're considering the best for the community, whether it be, uh, you know, a, a right or a left stance or something. It, it, it's what's best for the people. They didn't elect you because you are... Uh, you only tow this party line or that party line. So that's the, you know, that's the nice thing about it is that I can, I can provide my, my feedback and my voice regardless of what the rest of, you know, if I was on a provincial or federal poli- t- party, I would have to tow that line. We talk about apathy a lot on this show. Mm-hmm. And municipal politics, well, it's the front line, as you just said. Mm-hmm. It's the most apathetic. People aren't engaged. And I'm not blowing anyone's... Yep. A bubble here, but <laughs> you talk about partisanship, people mm-hmm. are engaged. You talk mm-hmm. about municipal politics. As long as my garbage is picked up, my water's turned on, and my pothole in front of my house is fixed, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that is in municipal politics? Uh, is it because there's no partisanship? So there's no team or team? So it's all about the city or the town? Yeah, I think <clears throat> if in some ways maybe no news is good news so <laughs> if you have clean running water coming from your tap there's not a lot that you can really state or complain about and yeah you know you might want to speak up if you hear your water bill is going up or something like that uh you know we, we hey we do hear when there is a heavy snowfall we hear complaints about snow removal and i think that is very consistent around the table at all municipalities and you know but if you don't uh if you don't have a, a heavy snowfall uh, in the middle of summer you're not going to get those same complaints um so i i think that you know if it's not really top of mind or or it, it's hard to... Because I, I find that when there's more macro issues around municipal politics, people will get involved. Mm-hmm. The micro issues won't. 
We are seeing a decline in voter turnout across this country. BC was horrendous. Saskatchewan's last mm -hmm. election. I know there was a snowstorm. Yeah. I had someone sit here and they said 5% turnout was good for them. Yeah. I was like, what? 5% <laughs> turnout is good? Yeah. That would be horrible in any other situation. Yeah. Um, when you engage with your community, because you have to go out and you have to sell ideas, but you have mm -hmm. to like, get feedback from the community about what you need to vote on. Are people willing to give their opinions to you when you ask for it? Yeah, yeah. I think they uh, you know, they have opinions, and uh, certainly we're we open to, and we're you know, our duty is to hear all different types of opinions, um, and we do we do try our best to get that uh, that word that information out there. You know, the reality is that sometimes the information information is just very dry, and not very exciting, and it's hard to in, engage uh, you know a taxpayer or resident on you know a, a boring topic about wastewater or uh you know infrastructure that isn't fun and exciting or but there is good. a fun and exciting thing that just happened this week actually in lloydminster with the federal government and provincial government of saskatchewan coming to the table and saying let's do it let's build this uh facility yeah we have uh we just announced today officially we do have <laughs> uh we have funding coming from our provincial and, and federal partners in uh new uh going towards a new event center in lloydminster uh, a dual ice surface uh to replace our aging uh centennial civic center which is back in the 60s you've been there you've I've seen it you know exactly <laughs> yeah it uh definitely is needed a replacement is needed for that facility and uh, it's nice to see uh do you get buy-in from that like when you announce something big like a facility while you're in sumo when you have announced this mm -hmm. i'm assuming you're hearing from people on social media and yeah. other ways yeah exactly and thing. either we we will you know we'll watch the comments as they come in we uh you know paying attention to what the the voices are saying and there's always there's again same thing there's always going to be the yays and the nays and there's there's uh yay hurrah let's let's do this and there's also the hey, you know, why right now, why, why this or why that? And, uh, you know, so we, it's, it's the balance act of taking that all in and still trying to provide the best for the community. So the balancing act also comes into play when you have to engage. You can't just go to your echo chamber of Twitter or social media. You have to go out to the community because I would say the majority of people are not on social media. As much as we think they are, the majority of them don't care. <laughs> They probably have a Facebook page, but they post dog photos. Or yeah, photos. yeah, exactly. So yeah. how do you see yourself in that role as counselor mm -hmm. of engaging people outside of the social media micro minority voices that are heard there? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> I, I wish I knew. You know, we uh, as a as a as a council, as an individual, as a you know, city, we're always you know putting it out there, and you know our avenues of putting this information out there is getting more and more limited as time goes by. Uh, you've said it. You know, social media has come and is feels like it's starting to also go. Yes. You know, you can uh, you the city has its Facebook page. And in order to get that information from social media, you have to like a page. And if you, hey, it's all about the algorithms. If you like a whole bunch of pages, that, that little piece of information that's coming through consistently from the city of whichever or municipality is not out there as prominently. Same thing if you simply don't listen to the radio anymore and you have uh, podcasts <laughs> or you have uh, or just MP3 music playing in your vehicle, you're going to miss a lot of that stuff. Uh, same with the, the print media, you know, we, you know, now it gets same thing, you know, a lot of people not sitting down, taking the time to open up the, the newspaper that gets delivered to their door in our, in our city anyways, to, to see what's going on. And I know I, when I left Lloydminster, I went to go work for the town of Slave Lake in Northern mm -hmm. Alberta and I worked for their communications. I was their communications and the one, con all, the reoccurring theme that I, we heard from residents was we didn't know. They liked it. We, we put it on Facebook. We put it on posters. Yeah. Unless you go door knocking yeah. every single issue, they're not going to know. Because there's always going to be that one person who misses it. Yeah. How do you make the best decisions off of that opinion? Because you have to gather all the information that administration has mm -hmm. given you, plus what residents, and you have to make the best decision. How do you think you do that? Yeah, I, you know, I think we're, you got to 
keep going with it. You have to, you know, we also do the open houses, the, the public surveys and all that stuff. And, and, you know, yes, the challenge is that even though you do all that stuff, you'll, if you were to look at it simply at a high level and go, we got 2% of the population or 5% of the population took part in this survey or provided this feedback, that at least gives you something to run off of. And if you didn't have that, then you would just be you know, willy nilly doing your own thing. And, and that's not appropriate. So I, hey, I think, you know, those, those public events, those surveys, you know, the, the social media stuff, the, all those things, they do provide input, which is valuable. And, you know, some will argue that it's not enough to form an opinion at the same time, it is better than nothing. And that's just, you know, I wish, I wish that people will watch this podcast or listen to this podcast and, and recognize that they need to make changes in their social media habits and their engagement habits or things that, you know, there's things that you can do in, in social media, for example, to, you know what, I, I do want to know about the next thing that's coming up in my municipality. So I'm going to go to the municipalities page, change a setting in their Facebook to say, always show me notification, notification yeah. from this page not the cats and dogs and all those you know funny meme pages but the ones that are very important the news the local governments those ones you know that's that's a bare minimum thing that they can do in order to uh, be informed yeah. one of the reasons why we switched to municipal politics and municipal elected officials this year was because we kept on hearing when we talked to municipal leaders that they they weren't comfortable talking in front of a, or a, a microphone or they were concerned that they were a new term a, a newly mm -hmm. elected councillor and they weren't sure what to say you seem to have a level head you seem to be able to be engaging um uh, don't let it fool you it's still daunting no, exactly. <laughs> i think it's daunting for everybody but how do you or what advice would you give a first term councillor who is in their first hundred days because in bc manitoba ontario new brunswick we have listeners all across yep. What would you say to these newly elected councillors as someone who was on council, mm -hmm. uh, who had a four-year hiatus and then yep. came back on the council, what advice would you give them to sort of give them the sort of upper hand that you wish you would have had when you first got elected? Yeah, uh, I think for one, you know, don't, don't take anything to heart. You know, for for one, take in the information. You, you do realize we live in 2023, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Social media is that. Yeah. Uh, I'm joking. I know, <laughs> I know. I, like, you know, there's, there's uh, you know, there's always those that will have things to say. And, and whether they're good, bad, or otherwise, you know, they're just one opinion. And and that's, that's fine. You know, take it in. If it's good, perfect. If it's not so good, that's okay, too. You know, just, just don't dwell on it don't sit on it don't you know you know as long as somebody isn't being uh, abusive to you or uh, harassing you or something like that it's okay to take in those comments and all those uh, and all that feedback and uh, you know we I, you get all sorts of uh, of types of comments and you know you I've watched people online call us names uh, you know not personally you just roll of course your back. Uh, yeah you know it it uh of course it, it has it it hits home it it hits you a little bit of course uh, there's no question if you weren't in this uh trying to do the best for your community and and seeing that stuff and it didn't hit you a little bit or didn't uh uh i think you'd be in it for the wrong reason so you know i just i think don't dwell on it is the biggest thing you know there's all types of people out there and they're going to have all types of opinions and there's you know the percentages or the you know the the that some i guess what i'm trying to say is there there'll be a there's wide always a vocal minority there's always a vocal minority there's also a, a non-vocal majority that yeah. is either just very happy complacent you know all those you know so don't dwell on the negative you know so I'm going to end with this, and this yeah. is the million-dollar question that mm -hmm. I end on all the interviews. And I've asked Councillor Buckingham, Councillor yep. Marin, and yep. uh, Mayor Albers this exact same question. Mm -hmm. So I want to know from you, what makes the city of Lloydminster such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Oh, it's uh, I'd, I'd have to say it's that, that the community 
size, you know, the, the, the size, which makes it feel like a community, but still has the amenities of a big city. So it, the, the people inside of it are, are what really make it uh, a great place to live. You know, you can, it's, it's not so big that you get lost in the mix and it's not so small that you're missing out on opportunities. It has all those things in between it. And, uh, you know, I just really, really enjoy Lloyd Minster. I'm biased, of course, because I grew up there, but, you know, I, I, uh, I, we have such a good, great core of people that are always involved and, and always the best things. events. And, it, yeah, I'm you know. sorry, but yeah. I, I know I'm biased because yeah. I lived and worked in Lloyd Minster yeah. for some time, but uh, downtown art, like yeah, yeah. street fest, street and, fest. Uh, chuck wagons and egg and fair, egg fairs. And like you guys have yeah. some of the best events that like yeah. it made me fall in love with Alberta and Saskatchewan. So I'm yeah. so happy. And you must have, like, and I would, I would just feel like you saw it too. That 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 people, those you know, you got to know. You still know a lot of people yep. there. From how long were you there? I was there for two and a half years. Two and a half years, and there you are. 20, <laughs> Yeah, 2013 to 2015, yeah. yeah. Which is not a long time in the scheme of things, but still, you know, you, you've left your mark on the city. You've, you know, still a lot of people know you and remember you from there. Well, and heck, if I could, t- like, I've talked to c- about Kurt Price about five yeah. times today. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. 90% sure yeah. <laughs> he probably doesn't remember me from a hole in the wall. Oh, I doubt that. So, yeah. It, it, that's the, the, the people who've made an impression on me in Alberta, in Lloydminster, made yeah. me want to stay in Alberta and Saskatchewan. Yeah, cool. No, that's awesome. Jason, thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you so much to our guests for joining us for this episode of the Cross Border Interviews. And to our viewers, thank you for tuning in and being part of this conversation. If you've enjoyed this episode, please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of our latest interviews and special episodes. We have some amazing guests lined up and we can't wait to share their stories with you. If you're able to, please consider backing the show to help us to continue to grow and produce more high-quality content. Every little bit helps. We appreciate your support as well. A link to our Patreon account is in the show notes. And if you can, please don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more behind-the-scenes content, show updates, and so much more. And finally... As much as we all love our phones and technology, let's remember to put them down and have real-life, in-person conversations with the people in our lives, even if it's just for five minutes. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Cross-Border Interviews. And remember, everyone, just keep talking.